In this video, we review requirements for the updated AZ900 Azure Fundamentals exam. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, we continue reviewing the skills required for the AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals exam. This video picks up where the last one left off, finishing the skills measured in the Describe Cloud Computing section under Describe Cloud Concepts. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Keep an eye on the playlist for new content and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD. The link is below. No sense dragging this on any longer than we have to. Let's jump in and get started with the different cloud models. The slides used in this video are available on my website. The link is below. We'll start with the different cloud models. Not all clouds are created equally. Microsoft defines three different types of cloud computing. The first is public cloud. A public cloud is owned and operated by a third party such as Microsoft with Azure. Public clouds offer a variety of services such as servers and storage. The resources in a public cloud are securely shared between customers. A virtual server, for example, may exist on the same physical hardware as other customers. Steps to secure customer resources and manage capacity are the responsibility of the cloud provider. The services are accessed over the internet. This is a small example of what cloud services have to offer, but good enough for the definition for a public cloud. Next is a private cloud. A private cloud is used exclusively by a single organization. It can be hosted on-premises or at a provider's data center. An on-premises cloud is an interesting concept to me. Isn't that the same as a traditional data center? It is, but it could also be an outsourced computing environment. Say an organization isn't ready to move to the cloud, but also doesn't want to manage its own infrastructure such as hardware networking. A third party may step in and provide dedicated hardware and management services for the infrastructure, providing some of the advantages of a cloud without being public. My point is a private cloud may take many different forms. The key is the infrastructure is dedicated and maintained on a private network. The third type of cloud is a hybrid cloud. This is a combination of both public and private clouds. The hybrid cloud offers a lot of flexibility by moving between the public and private cloud as needed. I would like to make a point about hybrid. For most organizations, there's no way to avoid it. If the plan is to transition to a public cloud or maintain a hybrid cloud, there will be two clouds. Be aware that these two clouds have different management tasks and require similar but different skill sets. It may seem at first that a hybrid cloud gives the best of both worlds, and it does, but at a price. As an organization moves to hybrid clouds, don't overlook the skill gap that may exist between the public and private cloud. But that's why we're here, to bridge that gap. So let's keep going. The public cloud is a good option for most organizations, including businesses that don't want to manage data centers, as well as organizations that need scalability and globally distributed networks keeping services close to the end users or companies that need to map infrastructure costs directly to a department or project. Cost in Azure can be assigned to a group and reported on to clearly identify where the resources are used. Organizations may stay in a private cloud if regulations prevent moving data to the cloud, or if a location is physically isolated with little or no internet access. Also, an organization may have a large investment that keeps them on premises. These organizations should investigate moving some or all services to the cloud as hardware becomes outdated or falls off of maintenance contracts. Plan a move to the cloud to avoid costly equipment refreshes. A hybrid cloud configuration could be a transition from on-premises to the cloud, operating in both environments as services are moved. It doesn't have to be a transition. Hybrid cloud can be an end state or a long-term solution. Hybrid also works well for organizations that take a best of both worlds approach, leveraging a mix of services to keep some on-prem and expanding to the cloud as needed. Let's review how fixed costs work in traditional IT. Hardware is purchased and implemented to satisfy the peak demand. But systems don't run at peak demand all the time. The resources cost the same if they're used 100% of the time or 60% of the time. The space between utilization and total capacity is an unused resource that costs the organization money without adding value. Over months and years, this unused capacity makes up a significant amount of IT-related costs. With the consumption-based pricing model, we're only charged for resources used. Capacity is dynamically scaled up or down to satisfy the demand. 
There's no unused assets, costing the organization money without adding value. This is often referred to as the consumption-based or pay-as-you-go model. Infrastructure purchased when operating with the fixed price model is considered a capital expenditure or CapEx. The assets are purchased up front or a commitment made to pay for the assets over a given period of time, such as a lease. The value of these CapEx assets decrease over time. The consumption-based model, on the other hand, is an operational expenditure or OPEX. With OPEX, an organization is billed when they use a resource and the expense for that resource can be accounted for when used. There are no upfront costs associated with OPEX pricing. I was in an environment that had a large blade server infrastructure and storage platform, router switches, and fiber channel hardware all were in the mix, all shared between multiple systems. The platform was used across multiple groups, capacity had been added over the years, and maintenance contracts expired and renewed with a third party. We were asked to identify how much of that cost was associated with one business unit. It was almost impossible to identify how much the platform cost, let alone how much one business unit used. With OPEX and Azure, we can tag resources and create a report that lets us know exactly how much the business unit or project cost. That leads us to the consumption-based pricing model. With consumption-based pricing, there's no upfront CapEx cost. No need to purchase, deploy, manage infrastructure. Just think of how much time that could cut off a project. I've seen projects grind to a halt because capacity had to be added to infrastructure, storage, or compute. The upgrade had to go through a requisition process, then a PO is generated, then an order submitted, and then we wait for the hardware. Once the hardware arrives, it has to be installed, configured, and tested. With cloud computing and the consumption-based model, we can add resources as needed. Simply go to the portal and deploy the resource, and it's ready in a few minutes. Once finished, remove it and stop paying. That brings us to the end of this video on the Describe Cloud Computing section of the skills required for the AZ-900 Azure Fundamentals exam. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep an eye on the playlist for new content. Thanks for watching.